Um, in response to various questions that have been submitted by MPs in Parliament, um, who are also concerned about automatic, automated facial recognition, um, the government answers a lot of those questions by saying that the deployment is an operational decision for the police. Um, which is a shame because they're asking questions that are factual questions, the kinds we put in as mayoral questions. So we do get questions, answers to those factual questions here, which is which is good. Um, but I wanted to ask you about the the wider issues around it as well. Um, I mean, you've said that the ethical and legal thinking behind facial recognition and other types of technology needs to develop. So, are you comfortable continuing to trial facial recognition without the ethical, legal? and procedural dimensions being better defined. Comfortable. You're very comfortable doing it. Um, will you be following the recommendations that come out of um, the Biometrics Commissioner and the London Policing Ethics Panel, who are both looking at this? Yeah, I mean, we welcome the fact that the um, uh, Ethics Panel have, uh, which is obviously a joint panel for, between the Met and, and uh, the, the, or, yeah, the Met and the Deputy Mayor, I think, or me and the Deputy Mayor, uh, they work, work uh, with. Um, we welcome the fact that this is an area that they're looking at uh, and um, we anticipate uh, their report will be published shortly um, and we've been working alongside them as they've been doing their work, obviously. Uh, so as they've been coming up with their thinking and sometimes us ahead of them or them ahead of us, we've been implementing recommendations as we go. So I'm very comfortable that we will be implementing their recommendations. I'd be very surprised if, if we were going to fall out about those. Um, and it's a, it's a really useful piece of work. I mean, having given you a rather short answer to start with, just to say, I, I think I hope the committee would agree. You know, the world is changing very fast. <coughs> facial recognition is a fantastic example. I remember being told 12 years ago, facial recognition is just round the corner. It's, it's, it's only a year or 18 months away. It's going to mean you won't be able to use undercover officers, you won't be able to do the, you know, and, 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 and. Well, here we are. And it is being used in um, certain circumstances in certain parts of the world in, in very sort of static uh, ways in, in sort of three or four years ago. It's now beginning to move really fast, like all of the rest of technology. And it's getting better and better and better by the minute uh, and can be potentially combined with other technologies as well. Uh, and private sector, good actors, bad actors, and police services will want to use this technology potentially. And my comment at ASK is that a really useful function for the Home Office, for example, is to make sure <laughs> that um, the government and uh, you know, are engaging in thorough debates with the public about the balance between privacy and security in the light of changing technologies. Uh, and uh, that needs to be done dynamically and, and quite quickly. Um, but <coughs> We believe that the public would expect um, that uh, if there's a technology that we can use lawfully, which we can, this is one, uh, is available, with which we are trialling with massive safeguards, which we are, uh, and all sorts of governance and checks, uh, that the notion that that technology might be used in limited circumstances to find as was recently done uh, in the Stratford trial that you know about, to, to identify a s from against a small list of wanted offenders for serious violence, I think the public would expect us to be thinking about how we can use that technology, seeing whether it actually is uh, effective and efficient for us. And that's exactly uh, what we are doing. So, I mean, one thing that isn't moving fast is, is the, the legal basis for this. The government's biometric strategy was, was much delayed and has come out without much um, forward thinking. Uh, the, um, the biometrics commissioner has said that it doesn't set out a definitive picture of the future landscape and describe this as, as short-sighted. So the, the legal basis for it is, is not particularly yeah. clear, but you're, you're clear that you're comfortable deploying it Absolutely. on Londoners yeah. while that's yeah. still in flux. I, I'm very comfortable that we're doing the trials. We'll get to the end of the trials, <coughs> and they are genuinely trials, uh, and, and we're doing a full uh, evaluation after that with independent people, ac academics, to see whether it, uh, how they've worked and whether it's a useful way of doing things, whether it's operationally effective and efficient and, and, and. But there is a considerable amount of legislation around, uh, around its use. A variety of different parts of the law re are relevant. I have a 
commander who authorizes every, which isn't necessary, but does every deployment, and he runs through a, 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 a set of questions, very like uh, any intrusive activity under uh, the Re Regulatory Investigation Powers Act. It's very carefully monitored, uh, and, I, and, and the lawyers are in Met Pass all over it, and have been from the beginning. So the lawyers are looking, our lawyers, who are very capable, are looking at this <coughs> all the time. And I'm completely comfortable that the activity we are doing in the trials is lawful and appropriate. I'm delighted that the Home Office un have recently announced that they are going to have um, a sort of advisory and oversight board. Because it's not just the Met, it's other police services in the country. Uh, and I'm delighted that possibly in the future, <laughs> there will be greater clarity about the roles of the various commissioners, all of whom we have been speaking to, all of whom have an interest in this. Uh, and I'm delighted that, there's, you know, that people are debating the subject. And it's very important in a liberal democracy that people are debating the subject. I'm completely comfortable with what we're doing, and we're going to carry on with the trials. Well, that's partly what this committee is for, to debate it. Yeah. I've just got a couple of questions, um, just factual questions about what happened in Stratford. Um, you yeah. mentioned that you trialled it uh, last week. I think the date was the 28th mm -hmm. of June. Um, I've seen um, the report, brief report back from um, Liberty, um, who were there observing. Um, they say that no correct identifications were made. They report that one person was misidentified, and despite the police quickly realising he was not the person on the watch list when he produced his ID, he was still subjected to a search. Um, it's unclear from their report whether or not a human checked the image before action was taken against this person. Um, so can you, can you outline the legal basis for doing this to, the, to this person? How, why, why was he searched? No, I can't tell you the, the exact detail of that. What I can tell you is that the superintendent who's reviewed it was completely comfortable with what went on. In essence, what we do is um, we have um, officers who will be uh, monitoring as soon as there's a, a, a suggested identification, a suggested identification. They may be uh, sort of back behind or they may be on the scene, if you like. They will then have a quick look at the picture to see whether it looks like it really is, because at, because there's no expectation that this technology will have 100%. We've, we've been correct promised rate. by the government as well that that will always happen. Yeah, and they have a quick check, and then say whether they're going to, to uh, whether they think it's it is appropriate or not to speak to the person. What then follows follows. It is also perfectly plausible that there's a situation in which somebody will be spoken to for a variety of other circumstances as well uh, during the deployment of this, of this uh, technology. Of course there is. Um, it is very heavily supervised. It is very carefully done. The superintendent who has looked at this is completely comfortable with the, with the activity, uh, and I have no reason to doubt what the officers have done at all. I am not expecting, and you shouldn't, I know you don't, Sean, but for the rest of the committee, not expecting this machine to only pick out people who are definitely wanted. That's not how they work. They work to suggest, and then there's a degree of judgment by an officer. Pick out any people who are wanted. I believe time. that in the trials, I've, I, I would have to double check this, but I believe that in the trials that we have done to date, we have had uh, one person detained as a result of this camera. But, to bring some sort of extra realism into it, these are in controlled circumstances with other operations going on around, for example, the knife arches. And yeah. you'll be familiar, Sean, with the fact that at Stratford, we did arrest two people with very large knives during that operation. Not as a result of the technology, but it's one of the tactics and, and suite of things we were doing. Um, it's a, <coughs> a, it's a, a tool. It is a bit like having what we call a super recognizer, an officer who's incredibly good at recognizing people, Preston Dick, Craig, I know he's wanted, I saw him on the briefing list this morning. We have officers who can do that brilliantly well and others who just don't recognize people. It's a tool, it's a tactic. I'm not expecting it to result in lots of arrests. So just in terms of the cameras used at Stratford, um, I, there was a newspaper video um, in which some of the officers were, were interviewed on the scene. Um, the, that seems to suggest that Transport for London station cameras were being used for this. That, that's not the case. Um, it, these were special cameras on a van as usual, or were you using TFL technology? 
Now you've not be <coughs> questions you're able to answer. You may yeah. not wish Can to you come back to us, to us on that. Because yeah. that, that was done. I've they, got it nearly to yeah. but not no, quite. They may have made a mistake, but it was certainly I concerning to see that. Oh, I have one more, one more question on, about um, working with other police forces. Um, South Wales Police are also doing trials of automated facial recognition. They did this most recently at an event in Swansea called The Biggest Weekend Fringe. And in their press release, they said they had three watch lists, one being intelligence led around organised crime groups linked to music festivals. So did the Met share any intelligence with the South Wales Police um, as to, to fulfil that watch list? <coughs> I do. I do. You may wish to consider and write to us on that one. It's and unlikely your colleagues would know the answer. That's OK. Can we get the question, answer to that question in writing, please? And finally, where else are you going to use oh, it? I, I believe you're going to use it six more times this year. So my note tells me we've got five more yeah. uh, trials okay. to follow. Um, we are um, deploying, uh, and another point for the wider committee is we deploy very overtly, so there is um, a great deal of awareness <coughs> that we are, we're there with the, with the technology, and we will be doing an overt deployment uh, in uh, Stratford uh, towards the end of this month, which, as you know, uh, has been one of our highest hotspots for violent crime, sadly, both uh, not so much the Westfield side, but the other side of the road in the shopping centre there and immediately around there. But Thank as you. a transport hub, it's, it's a, I'm afraid, a real hotspot. Thank you, Chair. Um, we'll Thank continue you. to scrutinise this. Thank you. And technology has been defended by Metropolitan Police Commissioner Cresta Dick, although she's admitted it won't lead to a lot of arrests. It's been trialled by Scotland Yard, but the results so far haven't been enough to convince critics of its value or silence campaigners who are concerned about privacy and human rights issues. Here's Frankie McCamley. With tens of thousands of people on police watch lists and many committing crimes already known to officers, is this what policing will look like in the future? The Met Police think it could be, trialling controversial facial recognition technology in Stratford. It's very carefully monitored uh, and, I, and, and the lawyers are in Met Palace all over it and have been from the beginning. So the lawyers are looking, our lawyers, who are very capable, are looking at this all the time. And I'm completely comfortable that the activity we are doing, are doing in the trials is lawful and appropriate. Trials are set to continue in five other locations across the city, but some are against the surveillance tactics. It is a breach of our fundamental rights. And so to see uh, Cressida Dick wanting to push ahead, keep rolling it out across our capital, is really, really alarming. The way this technology works is by setting cameras up in busy places, high streets such as here on the South Bank or outside public places. They'll scan hundreds, if not thousands, of faces. If the person is unknown to the authorities, the cameras will ignore them. But if they're on some sort of watch list, there'll be an alert like this, which will be sent to the appropriate place. This specific technology we're showing you has been developed by a small firm in South London. So it clearly works, and it's getting better all the time. So our technology now is 35 times more accurate than it was three years ago, and we absolutely agree there needs to be a debate about the appropriate and proportionate use of facial recognition. It shouldn't be everywhere, and it shouldn't look at everyone. But does the threat of crime and terror outweigh the ethical debate, and will society accept this new way of policing? Frankie McCamley, BBC London News. Well, in that report, you saw Commissioner Cresta Dick uh, giving evidence today at the London Assembly Police Committee. Uh, while there, she was also asked about the impact Brexit might have on Scotland Yard's work with the law enforcement agency Europol and the use of European arrest warrants. It is likely that if we are unable to access in the, the same things in the same way as we do now, that it will be, to, to, to coin a phrase, <laughs> Uh, clunkier, clumsier, and more expensive, and, and uh, any, any replacement systems. Security is really a threat around Brexit unless they really get to the point of making a deal and keeping us in all these arrangements. Well, if you're just joining us this evening, welcome to the programme. This is what's still to come tonight. <laughs>